Mondays are always busy for Dr. Sam Carter, and he has a lot of patients to see in the clinic today. To make matters worse, he knows the session is going to be long and hard, particularly as the air conditioning is not working properly. Without further thought of what lies ahead for the rest of the day, Dr. Carter starts to go through the stack of documents that his secretary has just placed on his office desk. As he reads each document in turn, his attention is suddenly drawn to a large batch of papers sent by a pharmaceutical company for which he is currently conducting a clinical trial. The papers contain two reports, both of which appear to relate to the trial for which he was the investigator. As he slowly reads them, he becomes aware they contain information about some adverse events that had occurred in some patients enrolled in the trial, the same trial for which he is currently recruiting patients. The first concerned a female patient who took the trial medication and died as a result of a car accident in which she was the driver. Dr. Carter slowly wipes his brow and continues reading the second report which refers to two further patients enrolled in the trial. A male aged 41 who had committed suicide and a female aged 27 with long-standing type 2 diabetes mellitus who also died suddenly. The report goes on to say that all had been enrolled in a trial conducted under the same protocol except it was conducted at a European investigative site. As he continues to read Dr. Carter suddenly breathes a short sigh of relief when he reads a statement from the pharmaceutical company's medical director, saying the investigator at the European site concluded there was no relationship between the deaths and the trial medication. Dr. Carter quickly glances at his watch, and as he walks out of his office, he calls out to his secretary, Please prepare the reports for submitting to the EC for me to sign off. With that, he briskly walks away to his clinic. This scenario elaborates on serious adverse events reporting of clinical trials. Dr. Sam Carter was involved in an international industry-sponsored clinical trial and any serious adverse events that happen at any trial sites must be reported to each participating investigator. In this case, the report came from the sponsoring company, which is the common way of distributing information, and included two serious adverse events, two death cases. However, the medical director of the sponsor stated that the investigator at the European site involved in the two events did not regard the two deaths as related to the trial medication. Therefore, there was apparently no reason to conclude that the trial participants recruited and managed by Dr. Carter were at a higher risk because of the new knowledge of the two deaths. Dr. Carter takes the correct action i.e., to submit the reports on the two deaths to the local EC to ensure an independent review and to obtain opinion of the events. The chair of the EC decides to conduct an expedited review. Note, serious adverse event reports to the EC are numerous for large-scale multinational trials, sometimes totaling 10,000 reports a year for 100 industry-sponsored trials. The EC chair in this scenario reviews all incoming adverse events reports, but will only see that a full EC review is made for treatment-related and not for unrelated adverse events.